I want to uh, have you join me in welcoming Chuck West. Chuck is the program director with Wisconsin School of Business Executive Education. Please welcome Chuck. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I have the responsibility at Executive Education of organizing advanced management. And uh, this year we reorganized this summer and created a new set of fall classes. And we always look at transitions, which is to say we believe that when people go through their career, they make significant transitions. And the skills that got you to the managerial level are no longer relevant to your success uh, moving up through the organization. So we, we look at the transitions your people go through and you go through and say, what do we need to move through the management uh, and become an executive or leader of our organization? And we identified four areas that we think are most relevant to your success at that point. So our programs and courses are organized around those four. By the way, if you read the literature, what you'll find out is some books have 108 points, some boil it down to 10. Uh, so for organizational sake, we said, what are the four or five most critical? And this is what we ended up with. So we have a variety of new courses that I'd like to kind of dig deep into one or two of them very quickly because it connects with uh, what you just heard and what we found to be as important as Karen did when we did our independent research, so thank you. Two of the courses under relationship, and we found of the four that are up there, relationships and leadership are the two that will be the most distinguishing in terms of your career success. So under relationships, we have two courses, one is the uh, how to influence without direct authority and that's our most popular course because in organizations today we have to influence up down and sideways and managers sort of intuitively get that that's why that's a course that has constantly had the best attendance we've added a new course this year success under duress which deals with your managerial skills under the kind of pressure where your magdala has been triggered <laughs> And it really deals with emotional intelligence, conflict management, and stressful situations, which we define as negotiations with parties with different interests. So that is where we are evolving the programs to. And I wanted to uh, tell you that these are the four competencies we, we stress. And behind them, it, we arrived at the very same point Karen did. And now we're going to do a very short exercise, because I said I had to teach within a 10-minute window. So we're going to ask you to do an exercise, and don't make me use my hockey coach's voice to stop you. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to talk to your neighbor for one full minute, and in that time, you will never connect. So if they say it's a nice day, you have to say, I like the color blue. And they come back with, I have a golden retriever named Annie. So you have one minute to not connect. I will start and stop you on the dime. Go. I'm going to ask you a couple quick questions at this point about your experience. How did you feel? You got to yell these out. How did you feel while that was going on? I've got uncomfortable, hard, isolated. How did you feel about your partner? And yes, you can say it. <laughs> and lastly, other than connect, what did you want to do? Quit and stop. Okay, now, here comes the fun part. Now, I want you to talk to that same person for a minute, and this time your job is to connect and get to know them better. You have a minute, go. Okay, here we go. How did you feel while that was going on? Engage, what was the other one? Comfort. How did you feel about your partner in this one? Well. 
And what did it make you want to do? Okay, here are my quick notes. And this is the difference between talking too much or listening. And this is core to just about everything we do as managers. So when we talk about emotional intelligence and we talk about what skill sets are behind these competencies, this is probably the biggest one and the hardest one that you and I deal with. Here's what it feels like when the person is not listening to you. Uncomfortable, hard, isolated, not caring, not listening, quit, stop. And notice the judgment we made about the person, not caring. We were pretty darn judgmental, but that's also very, very normal. When you are listened to without even an agenda directing the conversation, you feel this way about it. Engaged, comfortable, good, nice, want to leave together and continue. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> Thank you for that exercise, but that gives you a real foundational understanding of the impact of listening and the other skill sets on emotional intelligence. And you saw early on in one of Karen's slides that listening was listed by one of the young uh, school children that she mentioned. As we teach listening, and I have several different ad hocs that approach it differently, this is my, my page that I use with it. You just went through the first drill in listening, which is sheer quantity. If you listen more than you talk, people will feel good about being with you. Then we get into more specific skill sets about preparedness, and that one really means assigning importance to the task. And if you ever wondered why at home you're not listened to, it's the announcer of the football game has been assigned higher importance than you have. Uh, active listening, of course, is staying involved in the conversation. Selectivity and reinforcement are high-level listening skills we teach for problem solving and identifying the cause beyond the symptom that you might have first heard and for interviewing and hiring, et cetera. And then lastly, summarizing is summarizing their highest priorities, and that delivers a sense of empathy, and you saw that word also in Karen's slides. So a lot of this connects back to some of those core values, and we try to teach both the core values the, uh, and then try to teach the skill sets that are necessary to execute those things in, the, in your job, because at uh, University Exec Ed, we believe that knowing is part of the answer, but doing is the other half, and we try to teach both halves when you're with us. Thank you.